they're back from the depths. We've got the whale coming back with a new release. This is DeepSeek V3.1. And so far we just have the base. I'm gonna fill you in on what to expect though, so you can know what you should download. And let me just start off by saying, I don't think the base model is what most people uh, are ever gonna be interested in unless you're doing some really creative writing or you're looking to fine tune a model. But they did release this today about six hours ago. It is already trending on Hugging Face. It is a huge indicator of what the next steps are gonna be for their release cycle. And they also created a collection for it, which is, I think, a key indicator of what you should expect. This is a incremental release, it looks like, from what I can see so far. This is not a complete retrain. Now, going on to what you should expect. DeepSeek is really not into the hype game. They don't do it, and that's actually really nice. They usually put out a tweet and that's about it. They don't respond to other people's responses to it. They don't do any of that. They just put out a tweet, it's out, and that's that. May 29th was the last tweet they put out and that was DeepSeek R1 0528 checkpoint, which a really solid model. Only GLM 4.5 has actually gotten to the point where I think DeepSeek was for open source models that you can download and run reasonably in a household. And especially the GLM 4.5 Air is now something that I think is an amazing model and I highly recommend people check that out. So let's take a look at the timeline of, in my opinion, what happens next and how long you're gonna have to wait to get an additional model out over the base. So we could see some rapid releases. This is my actual hope here. And so we got the V3 and the V3 base in the same day. I don't think that we should expect a R2 today, but I actually do expect there to be a V3 that is not the base, which a base model is gonna ramble like crazy. It's good for fine tuning and maybe doing some reinforcement training on. It's not what you wanna have a chat experience with. It's not really gonna be cohesive and following a conversation. It does look like it's performed very on par kind of with Ader Polyglot. This is definitely not an architecture change. They really have kind of landed on their architecture, which I think is probably good. And they're probably doing a lot of additional changes to make it a more efficient, more token efficient and faster to get a response kind of model that is good and high quality. So I do usually check a couple of things whenever a new model comes out to see where we're at and whether or not something's gonna be big and breaking. And when we look at VLLM, this is one of the best places to go and crawl and troll around in their issues. Also, you can look through their pull request and their frequent pull requests that have happened in the past couple of days to see if there is anything that's been launched there or announced there that needed to have some additional fine tuning around some of the code, which seems to be pretty often that that happens. So I don't see anything in here that indicates that there is a lot of effort going into this to re-engineer VLLM. So you probably are good with the support for that. And that's great because you can now follow along with the written guide, which we'll soon have probably today, an accompanying guide for the VLLM setup for a local AI server. And definitely when the non-base model comes out, the instruct model, you can bet that we'll be pulling that down. I'm not gonna pull down a base model and run it because it would just ramble. It, I mean, they're good for things. They're just not good for basically my use case and probably 95% of people's use cases out there. But definitely you can follow along with the steps already and you can get yourself up and running. And if you're interested, pull this down and run it. And if you do, make sure to drop a comment below and let me know how it is going. And it's gonna actually be all of that built upon the very easy base kind of core knowledge that we've been forming over the past two guides, now soon to be three guides, for how to get up and running with your own local AI server. Of course, the quad rig here with 512 gigs of RAM and four 3090s does give us enough capabilities to run DeepSeek in its variance in the 685 billion parameter model kind of scope. I might, even add in a couple of extra GPUs to this rig. I might toss, since it would be in kind of a hybrid -y mode, I might toss the 30, 60, 12 gigabytes and get an additional 24 gigabytes because I got two of those. And I know that the power supply can definitely handle that with the safe margins and everything on this currently. So I might do that whenever we get ready to launch this. So there could be extra GPUs in here also. They, them creating a collection about it, I think means that there will be more that's coming in this release cycle for sure. And definitely there's a lot of chatter on places like Reddit about it already. And I mean, if you're interested in running a base model for fine tuning, 
this is certainly interesting to you. It does look like there's iterative performance improvements as far as how their MOE is handling. Maybe shared experts have gotten a little bit better and hopefully seeing a refinement that gives us better and better quick answers is something that I know I definitely could want. DeepSeek R1 is long in the tooth at this point. I mean, I don't use DeepSeek R1. GLM 4.5 superseded it as my, I'm gonna run something really hard and I don't care how long it takes. Now, GLM 4.5 Air, I'm trying to work into a more kind of routine workflow. And that one is, in my opinion, the best open source model right now that you can run. It is fantastic. Of course, if you've got some lower requirements, also Quinn 3.5, Definitely their latest releases are absolutely amazing. And certainly if you don't have a massive rig, that is definitely the way to go. And you know, maybe you want some more performance sometimes, Quinn's probably the way to go there also. So it's really interesting to see what DeepSeek's gonna do here. Will they launch some distills? I don't know. I really don't think that went over too hot last time, but it did open up the scope of capabilities. From a marketing standpoint, it was confusing one, I, I got confused, a lot of people got confused. Uh, but second, it really was kind of the implications of, hey, that's not really a deep seek underneath there unless you're running the big one. I think it was a little bit of a letdown to some people, but still those were really good models for the January, February timeframe. A lot of people opted to run them also because they went all the way down in size to something that everybody everywhere could run. You saw videos out there, deep seek running on a Raspberry Pi and all this other stuff. So, I mean, it definitely was pretty cool. I think we don't see that this time. I think we see one, maybe two, maybe two. I'm not ruling out that we couldn't see a reasoning update release with this also, but I don't think that that's what we should expect. I do think you should expect to see an instruct and I do think you should expect to see that really soon, hopefully in the next couple of hours. So you bet that I'll be back with another video if we get that. This means the next couple of days are likely to be pretty awesome if you're into local AI. I look forward to reading your comments. Big shout out to all of our channel members. Thank you very much for joining. You can learn more about that down below and also check out the links to the guides that I released if you want to get up and running this in a very efficient, very user-friendly and very fast way locally. And this series definitely does follow sequentially. So you need to start at the first one if you are new to Proxmox to get to the end state. If you are experienced in Proxmox, you could probably jump some of that a little bit, but definitely creating the base container, which is going to make the deployment of VLLM about a, I don't know, 15 minute video. Uh, versus a 40 minute video, that right there is kind of the key thing that's a success uh, criteria is rapid redeployment, rapid redeployment, rapid adaptation. And that's what that, that entire guide series is geared towards getting you to the next level of your own local AI setup and rig. I hope you guys are ready for some excitement because the whale is back. We've spotted it. It's surfaced and it is blowing tokens at its hole. And you can check out these videos for how to get started with the first step, which is setting up a Llama and also getting your Proxmox base system installed. After that, we've got Llama.C++ taking you all the way through the steps, including creating our base image, which we're about to use for the upcoming VLLM.